A stack view is a container view in Xcode that can contain other views such as images, buttons, labels, text fields, and we'll arrange those in either a horizontal row, which is a horizontal stack view, or a vertical stack view, which it puts them in a column. It provides a lot of flexibility in terms of how these views then are laid out within the stack view. We can have them fill the stack view, we can have them do equal spacing, uh, we can have them do equal centering within that stack view. We'll look at those options uh, in this video. And they provide multi-device compatibility. It makes it easier to lay out views for iPad and iPhone in the sense we can more easily make these relative to each other in terms of sizes. We're not necessarily hard coding uh, constraint numbers. As a result, the stack views can provide the opportunity to use less constraints and simplify our interface. And that's why these are, are really worth taking a, a good look at. And you can also nest the stack view. So I can put a horizontal stack view inside of a vertical or a vertical stack view inside of a horizontal stack view. And I can actually have several levels of stack views that are nested. So let's take a look at the stack view in Xcode. I've created a new project with iPhone 8 as my target. Um, I'm looking at the main storyboard and I'm going to bring in a stack view. We'll bring in a vertical stack view. So I'm going to add that to my storyboard. I'm going to go ahead and set up some constraints. I'm going to hide the left panel and let's bring in some constraints. And I'm going to constrain this to my view. We'll do 40 at the top. 20 leading and trailing and 20 at the bottom. So I'll add those four constraints and there's my stack view. Now I'm going to add just a regular view I'm going to drop that into the stack view. And I'm going to change the color of this view so we can see it. Let's make it red. And so right now that view conforms to the entire stack view. And that's okay. We're going to fix this. So we're going to have multiple views in here. I'm simply going to take this view, copy it, and paste it. And we're going to change the colors of these subsequent views. And then I'm going to take the very top view and add some constraints. This is going to be constrained to the stack view. So I'm going to constrain it at the top being zero. I'm going to do zero on the left and zero on the right. And then I'm going to set up an aspect ratio and add those constraints. Let's look at the constraints in the size inspector for that view. So I want to change the ratio, the aspect ratio. And let's make this um, five to one. Then we select all three of those views and set up a constraint that these are all the same width and height, equal width, equal heights. So you can see that some of the views go beyond the stack view. I'm going to take that very last view and let's set up a constraint to tie it to the bottom of the stack view. Add a constraint. And then we take the stack view and change this to the distribution to equal spacing. And so now we have our red view. And just so we can keep these straight, I'm going to rename these. So we have view one, view two, 
and view three. The red view is constrained to the top of my stack view. The yellow view is constrained to the bottom of the stack view. And then the stack view we said to do equal spacing of all these objects. Um, let's go ahead and add a couple more views here. So I'm going to add in two more. And again, I'm going to renumber these so we can keep these straight. This helps me setting up constraints to see if it says it's, you're constraining to a view, it's nice to know which view you're constraining when you have several of them. So we have views one through five. And just to keep these straight, I'm going to change this color. Now these are all set as being equal height and equal width to each other. Let's take the blue view and look at the constraints. And I can see equal height and equal width to view one, and this is view two. If I change the height, I can alter the multiplier. And let's say I'm gonna make that a three. And now that view is three times higher than view one. We've multiplied it by three. Same way I can take the width. I'm going to go back to the stack view and I'm going to change one more thing in the properties here. My alignment is fill. I'm going to make this center. So it's going to center all of my objects in the stack view. Each object will be centered. I'm going to go back to view two and now let's change the equal width and make it proportional. We can change the multiplier to 0 0.8, and notice how it shrinks that in. I'm going to take the view number 4, select it. I'm going to add another stack view here. This time I'm going to add a horizontal stack view. I'm going to add it to that view, so it's indented under the view. It's inside that view. I am going to just simply bring my margins in a little bit, and I'm going to set up some constraints here. So I'm going to do 5 and 5. This is going to be to the view 4. So it's just going to be a little bit inside of view 4. And then on the left and right, um, I'll set this up as 15. This is going to view 4, 15, view 4. We'll set those constraints. So I now have a stack view inside view 4. And it's a horizontal stack view. So now I can take a regular view and I'm going to add that into the stack view. I'm going to constrain that view to the stack view on the leading side. I'm going to set up the aspect ratio. And let's add two constraints. And then I'm going to modify the aspect ratio to be one to one. So it's going to be square. I'm going to go back to the stack view. Let's look at the settings for this stack view. I'm going to distribute this with equal spacing, and I'm going to center it as far as alignment. And I'm going to come back to my view, and let's set a height here of uh, maybe 25. So now it's really small. I'm going to go back to my view here look at the constraints. And again, I'm going to make this equal to my top view. So we'll do equal with equal height. There we go. These last, these views three and four, because I created those after I did the equal heights and equal widths, did not get those set. So I'm going to, I'm going to set the green one as well. Equal height and equal width to the top view. And I'm going to take that view that I added into our nested stack view. 
And I'm going to select that. And I'm going to paste that in so I get three of them. And I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to change the height of it from 25 maybe to 45. And the last one, we're going to change the ratio from 1 to 1. And let's make it 2 to 1. So it is wider than it is tall. So right now, if we look at our stack view, these are being centered in the stack view. I can change that alignment to make it top. Now they all line at the top. I can align them on the bottom. Or I can also say fill. And so it's filling the stack view and it's actually changing my parent stack view to conform. This is based on the different constraints and the priorities. Anytime you have something that doesn't go the way you want it, not a bad idea to do Control Z or Command Z. Take it back, undo that last one. Um, I'm going to change instead of equal spacing here. Before I do that, let me change the color. So I'm going to change the color of this middle one. I'll make it red. And on this one over on the far right, I'm going to change the color uh, to be a gray. I don't like the gray. Let's change the color. To be purple. Okay. So now again, I'm going to take the stack view. Instead of equal spacing, we're going to say fill. And so it fills the stack view. And based on the priorities, it ended up stretching the red view and kept the other two the same because there we had set up some constraints in terms of their height and width that weren't necessarily in play for the red one. And again, I can do Command Z to undo. Looking at the stack view again, this time I'm going to say equal centering. You're not going to see much change there other than if you look really closely, the red square moved over just a little bit. The way the equal centering works, um, if these are all the same size, we'd see no difference. But it takes the center, it takes the center of the white view, and the center of the red view, and the center of the um, purple view, and equally spaces those centers. If I make this a larger view, I'm going to change the constraints here again. Instead of two to one, let's make this four to one. And so now with equal centering, it's finding the center of the purple square, the center of the red one, and the center of the white one, and applying equidistance between those centers. We can also choose to fill equally, and they all now have the same width. The height is different because I specified a different height uh, for one of these, and so that constraint is kicking in. We can choose to fill proportionally, or we can choose to fill totally. And again, here it's looking at the constraint. It's taking the highest view in the in the hierarchy, or the top view in the hierarchy, and saying, okay, that white square is 25 by 25. And then because of the constraints set up for the purple one, it's going to keep a 4 to 1 ratio there. But we set it, set it as 25 height. And then the red one just sort of fills in as far as the width. In most cases, when we're working with stack views, we're probably going to want equal spacing. So that is how stack views work. You see we can nest a stack view inside of a stack view. So a horizontal instead of a vertical, we could have a vertical inside this horizontal. So we can nest several several steps deep. The idea as you begin to look at your uh, design that you want to create is kind of determine how could I do this using stack views.